new chair just dropped. We are going to be getting rid of this guy and I will be assembling this guy. I think it's gonna be really comfy, I'm excited. First off, we have this new chair. This is from Article. And I personally am in love. Like, look at, look at this. And it's so like soft and comfy. And like, it's, it's so comfortable. It's really great. We're getting rid of this chair. I just sold it today. Someone's gonna pick it up tonight at six. I also have some recycling to take out. And um, yeah, I just, it doesn't match. You know, it used to be over here, but I, like, I like this so much better and like it matches the couch now i still need to do the gallery wall situation and then someone needs to come over and fix the couch because there are these staples that are coming out and i am very upset because drake and i we spent a lot of money on this couch um and i would like for it to not have problems and also it's not as comfortable as i wanted it to be which is kind of disappointing but we have that table that used to be over here, over there now. I moved a lot of stuff around in the drawer units over here as well. So over here we have these um, like crates from Hay, H-A-Y. I saw Lee Ellickson have some in her recent vlog and I was like, this look perfect for right over here. So I got some and then in this top one over here, I have like packaging and stuff like from Eco and Clothes, like the rigid tab lock mailers, the glassine bags are also in here. And then the second one, I have like just spare packaging that I wanna reuse. And then under here, next to Spooky's food dish, are all of my spare panels that I don't have room for elsewhere. So I have lots and lots of spare panels to paint on. So I also changed some things around in the drawer unit as well. So over here, we've got my paintings that are kind of in progress. The top two drawers are still the same. So this is still my palette and these are still my paints. But in here, we've got like panels that I have not done anything with yet. We have some oil painting paper, etc. And here is actually like these two drawers, probably the biggest changes. Here I have all of the flat storage. So prints that I haven't hung up yet, like flat originals are in here, like paper and these like ornaments and things. And then here are all of my panels that I have finished. Whether I like them or not, they are in here. So this one we made in very early days of the channel this was a study of artist ken folks and then i have another one of his in here too these are some strawberries that i also made very very early on in the life of the channel um these i might make into stickers if i can get them photographed nicely i think they would work really well as stickers because they have just kind of nice a nice patterning to them but yeah some more recent paintings like this guy I really like the way that this one turned out as well it's a nice like quick study and yeah so other just like quick studies this one was an a la prima painting one sitting and I think it turned out really really nice I'm a, a big fan everything sort of looks a little bit skewed right now because the shadows are so harsh but I yeah, I like the way this one turned out as well so yeah, one of these days we'll sort through this and we will take photographs of everything, but it is a little bit too sunny right now. So I don't trust the photographs to like come out quite right. So underneath this trestle of my desk, we now have another one of these same bins that I have over there. And in here next to the trash can, we've got like some, um, just like 
sketchbooks, paper, like stationery and stuff. And then also like my glass mediums, like my mediums that are in glass bottles. Um, my art guard for when I like bother to use it. And some uh, acrylic primer, like sealing stuff and some gesso over here as well. So just trying to like organize things a little bit better have everything make a little bit more sense and also like not look as visibly cluttered which i do think it looked quite cluttered before and these drawer units like used to not be able to close so now they can close which is great and i think the studio as a whole just like looks a little bit nicer i also moved some art books over there oh and then up here as well i'm using one of the smaller bins it's kind of like a catch-all place for stuff around my desk area which also needs to be cleaned up a little bit. I was working on a painting last night, but yeah, I think overall the studio is a little bit more organized. And then I shifted some things around up here as well. So we have one of those smaller bins again for like my acrylic paints up here. And some of my books and stuff are also on this top shelf. And then I have to repot this plant like fairly soon because it is getting really big and I wanted to have more room to grow. So, yeah. Okay, so do you guys know that viral TikTok sound? Can we skip to the good part? If you know, you know. I feel like I have been treating my artistic development like, can I skip to the good part? And avoiding focusing on the fundamentals. And I keep saying that and I keep not focusing on the fundamentals, but I don't know. I just, I don't find drawing like very fun, I guess. I think fundamentally I am a, a sculptory kind of painter. Like, I just really enjoy being able to carve out shapes with other shapes, and that is, like, not a really a thing that you do in drawing. Like, you just put down lines, and I like to sort of push and pull. But we are practicing some drawing skills, and we are slowing down and forcing myself to focus on trying to make as close of a recreation as possible in this study. So this is a Willard Metcalf painting that we're working on right now. It's a master copy, and... I just, I love the looseness of Willard Metcalf's work. So Willard Metcalf was an amazing painter. He was an American Impressionist and a lot of his work is just very loose and he does a lot of really interesting stuff with lighting. Like he has this whole series of paintings just like this, of houses at night and this kind of glowy, almost like haunted aesthetic that I think is really magical. And I wasn't 100% sure how I wanted to go about recreating this piece. I tried to do it in gouache in my sketchbook. I don't show that clip because honestly it was just terrible and I wasn't treating it very seriously. And so I sort of ditched the gouache piece and did it in oils instead. As I talked about earlier, I have a bunch, a bunch of small flat panels that I haven't really done anything with and I want to do more stuff with that because I have all of these materials and it feels, you know, wasteful, of course, to not use them. So we are doing this recreation on a quarter inch thick treckle oil ground panel. This is, I think, a 10 by 10 inch. It's a pretty good size for me to practice all of the loose brush work that I wanted to from his painting. Even though, of course, he painted on a much larger scale. And so we're not going to get like those individual brush stroke by brush stroke recreations. It's not meant to be a forgery. Um, just practicing the lessons that I think I want to draw out of this piece, which are loose brushwork and a more sort of deliberative kind of painting practice. Like there is loose brushwork and there's rushed brushwork. 
and the two things are not the same. This painting, I've been taking it pretty slow. We don't finish it in this vlog. I think I want to save that for this week's stream. It's loose, but it is very slow. Every single brush stroke is pretty calculated. I really want to make sure that I'm capturing it just right. And so I actually take some photos of it halfway through, load it into Photoshop, overlay the original painting on top, and make adjustments accordingly. And I think this technique really saved me. It helped me notice immediate areas for improvement, and it's not like the same thing as tracing, you know what I mean? But I think I'm probably definitely going to rely on this same technique, like overlaying my painting with the reference or the original that I'm trying to copy over the top of it and seeing, okay, like this angle is off, the like the leg should be turned this way, this tree is the wrong shape, etc. I think that will really really help, but back to technique here. I have no idea how Willard Metcalf painted this piece. I have no insight into his process here. I'm just trying to deconstruct it in the way that I know how, and in this case I, you know, lay down all of this, um, this, you know, this yellowish orangey warm tone and then I take my brush and I scratch some of that away in the areas that I feel like should be lighter. So one thing that I have learned with using oils and specifically the treacle oil ground panels is that the first wash of color will always be the most engaging. There is something about a light color being backlit by the white of the ground underneath that makes it really glow and it's not an effect that the successive layers of paint can really recreate, not at least without a lot of effort. So I wanted to um, wanted to be very deliberate about that. So I take my brush and I scratch away some of that initial layer of paint to reveal some of the white ground underneath, still stained, of course, by that first wash, but it's a much lighter, almost sort of lemony yellow. And I sort of use my brush to erase away the highlights of the painting, blocking in those highlights in sort of an eraser-like fashion. It's a technique that I found fairly useful and I'm definitely going to use this again going forward. And from there on, we sort of, you know, I try to draw in the uh, the sketch as best as I can, what we're fo sort of focusing on in this painting, this tree in this house, sort of interacting in these interesting ways. And we start in by blocking in the tree and then putting in the sky and then there are a lot of interesting dark values in this piece and I want to try and add those in as soon as I could to really sort of capture the essence of the painting as soon as possible just so that I could correct as needed because it's really hard to sort of visualize ways to improve your master copy when it doesn't look or feel like the original yet and when you don't have sort of those basic shapes blocked in. So I tried to have that as early as possible and then just sort of fiddling with it from there on out, you know? And it's not um, it's not a perfect recreation, but it is definitely teaching me a lot about loose brushwork. So you are going to be seeing a lot more of Willard Metcalf's work and a lot more master studies in the future. And I think I've really, really been enjoying this practice in my creative work, just sort of focusing on recreating older paintings that I really love and admire and I am learning so much and I feel like it's really making me more comfortable and more at ease when I am approaching original stuff and I sort of need to teach myself this muscle memory when it comes to painting. That is the biggest aspect of my work that I feel like I really need to improve, just my intuition and how I would sort of automatically approach a piece. I want I want to improve that aspect. I feel like I I do a good job when I think things through, but so often when I paint, I don't want to do that. So I need to teach myself to both be more deliberate and to have a better intuition when it comes to painting. So yeah, uh, now we are taking a little bit of a break from this painting and we are working on a baking project. So I am baking Pasca here, P-A-S-K-A. -A. It is an Eastern European traditionally sort of Christian Eastery holiday sweet bread. Mine ended up tasting a little bit savory because I did not clean the cutting board or the counter enough after I made my lunch, which was very savory. And so it had a little bit of like an oniony taste to it. So it didn't quite match the flavor that it was supposed to be, but it makes a very good garlic bread. And I did this little braid and it came out really pretty. And the dough was very easy to make. I will link the recipe for this in the description if you guys are interested in that, but yeah, and then we're just sort of jumping right back into this painting, fiddling with it a lot, adding in those darker values, adding in the shadows, how sort of the 
the tree is casting shadows in the house and how the house is interacting with the light and there's lots of interesting stuff going on here um and again i am just i am so glad that i am starting to do master studies and someday soon i want to make a video specifically about how to approach one but i want to get some more under my belt before i do that so i can really give you guys excellent information but yeah, pretty soon we are going to jump into a real-time segment um, where I'm going to show you guys some of the mail that I've gotten recently. So yeah, I will see you guys in a couple of minutes. So we have some other stuff that I want to open as well. I ordered some stuff from Urban Outfitters, um, like a nightstand and a dresser, but those aren't going to get here until a little bit later. But the other thing that I ordered were some string lights. So I think these are going to be like super, super, super cute. Oh yeah, these are gonna be perfect. And basically I wanna put these like sort of over my desk where I have like the um, the brackets for the shelves. I wanna sort of intertwine them there and have them like move through the plants and stuff. And I feel like that would look super, super cute. And then I also wanna figure out a way to in integrate like this kind of design into my stream overlay. So we'll talk about the stream overlays another time, but let's just get these open. Oh my gosh, yes, these are adorable. Perfect, okay, and then they take double A batteries, which I think I have like a bunch of. Oh, they work. I mean, of course they were gonna work, but still, cute. Okay, so this one is like a small package of new art supplies. I ordered a couple of things. We've got just a tube of yellow gouache. This is M. Graham's Azo, Azo Yellow. So I got four packs of these Hanamula watercolor postcards. Um, these are basically for my mini originals tier when that starts becoming more of a thing. Um, the mini originals tier is live and there's currently nobody on it, but I do want to be fully prepared for when there are people on it. So I got four packs of 20, so I am like set for a while. I also got some pencil leads for my mechanical pencil and two new sketchbooks. So this is the Watercolor Journal by Strathmore, their 400 series. It is eight and a half by five and a half and it's like a landscape orientation. So I like the paper of the Strathmore watercolor sketchbooks a lot and I figured that a smaller size could just like help me fill it faster, so. Got one of those, and then I also got the Lee Ellickson favorite Strathmore 500 series mixed media sketchbook. This is a pretty small sketchbook. It's not like as bulky as my other one, which for reference is like right here. Way, way thinner. Should definitely be able to fill this faster. Oh, this is a nice paper. I've never like tried this sketchbook before. This is my first time, but I, I am a big fan. This is, yeah, this is nice paper. This is gonna be exciting to work on. Okay, 
cool. And it's 190 GSM. I usually go for the 300, but I figured that we'd just try something new. So, yeah, two new sketchbooks. I am excited to be able to fill these guys up once we finish that one over there, but that is a couple of weeks on the line, I think. I thought it would be a cute idea to wrap up this vlog by hanging up these string lights. I am a really big fan of these mushroom string lights. I think they add just the right cute touch to the studio area. Yeah, if you guys are interested, I will be working on the painting that we started in this vlog a little bit more in this week's stream. I think that's going to happen tomorrow. So that's going to be Thursday, February 3rd, probably starting at noon Eastern time or so. And this week on Patreon, I released an even chunkier studio vlog than this. So if you guys are interested in watching even more vlogs, check out the Patreon. And then I am also going to be releasing a YouTube analytics roundup video talking about how much money I made in January. And spoiler alert, it was way more than I thought it was going to be that I talked about in my last video. So yeah, kind of crazy times. I think, you know, realistically, we're going to be able to go full time um, by the end of the year. So that... That's life changing. Um, and again, I just want to thank you guys so, so much for all your support. It really does mean just the world to me. So anyway, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.